Hi, my name is Vincent and today I want to talk about a few tips on what you could do to be successful in a college level or high school math class. Now I'm making this video because when I went to college I didn't do too well when I first got there. My study habits were not that great and as a result my first few grades in math you know were not that high. So here's a look at uh, something I organized which shows how I did in my first few classes. Now I think the first thing uh, you might notice or that pops out is I didn't do too well you know in calculus one I got a C plus two years goes by I choose to be a math major and I take calculus two and linear algebra and I get a B and I have to withdraw from linear algebra it was just way too much for me and my study habits were just not effective for you know keeping up with the workload but one thing I you know I started doing was I started mimicking the kids who were doing well and when I started implementing these tactics, I started to see, a, you know, a big improvement in my grades. So I, I'm going to get into the tips. The first tip I'll recommend is to form a study group. Now, a study group should be about, you know, two to four of you uh, sitting at a table, you know, somewhere in the library. And, you know, make sure that you choose productive group members. You know, don't be with a group of four kids and you know, they're going to be goofing around the whole time and not really focusing on the work and then you wind up like just wasting a few hours you know pick kids who are motivated and you know really care about their grade and you know are serious workers and work well in a group because the benefits of working in a group is you could get stuck at a particular part of a problem and then they could just give you like quick tips on how to move forward so you know I mean YouTube uh, is great for learning on your own I mean I had to use YouTube as well but I would only rely on those when the whole group is confused or if you're studying independently so working in a group is a great way you could bounce ideas off each other and also if you understand something that someone else in the group doesn't explaining the techniques to someone else is a, a very effective way of learning it to that next level because if you could explain how to do something that means you really you know definitely understand how you know to do the technique so working in small groups you know definitely helped me big time you know in terms of bringing my grades up now the second tip uh, with math, the only way in my opinion to get really good at math is to just practice a lot, a lot of problems. You know, uh, even as a teacher now, I'm going through countless, countless pieces of paper front and back with tons of math equations and I have to do that to keep my skills sharp and you know, as a math major in college, in my worst semester I went through about 500 pages of printer paper front and back to learn how to do the techniques. But here's the thing, when you're spending a lot of hours, put a few breaks in between. You know, if you're working for an hour to two hours straight, you really don't, uh, it's not like, it's like the law of diminishing returns, like that each additional unit of time you put in is not gonna like help you learn that much more. So be sure like every hour or so to go outside for like a walk or, you know, to, to watch like something goofy on YouTube maybe to, you know, to help you relax a bit so that you're not just studying you know straight through the whole way so you know definitely the key is you just have to practice a lot a lot of problems you know and you're supposed to get the problems wrong as weird as that sounds math is all about messing up and you know you're supposed to make mistakes you're just not supposed to quit when you mess up just keep attacking and you know you'll eventually get it now the third tip is sorta of stemming off of the second tip that if you only focus on procedures you're going to have a lot to memorize by the end of the semester so the third tip is to focus on concepts you know you wanna like use the textbook to focus on why a particular theorem or formula works so you wanna either look at a proof of the theorem or you wanna like really investigate the formula so that you understand it inside and out now, for example, uh, for something like, I'll even go back as far as middle school, you know, sixth to eighth grade. If you get really good at ratios and proportions, then by the time you get to trigonometry, maybe when you're doing like the law of signs or you're doing converting from radians to degrees, if you just understand ratios and proportions very well, that topic will be easy for you to learn because it's just going to integrate into something you already know. So by focusing on concepts and the why behind the techniques and the theorems, you're going to get yourself to that next level of math because it's all about shrinking the ideas. You know, as you get better at math, 
it's like you know less, but you just know the little stuff you know so well that it just builds the rest of the subject. Now, the fourth tip I would say is go to your professor's office hours. When you go there, though, make sure you're showing up with something very, very specific. You know, you don't want to go there with the mindset oh, like, oh, hey, professor, I want you to reteach me all of lecture 20. Like, they're going to... They're going to get annoyed and you know not really be all enthusiastic about just explaining things from the beginning to the end. You know, you go there with something very specific. Like let's say calculus 1, you're solving a really complicated integral and you're stuck at the halfway point. Just, you know, oh, I don't know how to continue from here. And what they'll do is they'll point you in the right direction so that you know, you you don't rely on them completing the problem for you, but they tell you almost what direction to look so that you're still ultimately figuring it out yourself and getting smarter because once again with math reading through the notes is not the most effective way of learning math you want to be able to figure things out yourself and practice until you're able to go from beginning to end and by the time you get five to ten questions correct in a row you know that's going to ensure that you're getting really good at math now before I go to tip five it's, it's kind of stemming into you know the practice component if you are practicing just know growing up in the digital age you have an incredible advantage that let's say you're learning I know the law of signs uh, you could go on Google and type in law of signs space worksheet space PDF and chances are you're gonna find about five worksheets probably with answers included on that topic so this is a great era to go through college because there's so many additional resources outside of the textbook that you could use to help you prepare for you know all your exams and now the fifth tip is you want to spend your time wisely when you're studying and what I mean by this the last class that I showed you guys on that little snapshot was uh, it was called number theory and for that class that was one of my best performances in a math class that I got pretty much a hundred on every test in a row there was one test where I got let's say a 95 but the extra credit points from one of the other tests put me at a hundred so the you know for that class they actually gave me like an A plus and the reason why I was able to do well in that class and I was working full-time as a teacher when I took that class was after a while I cut my study time down because I was trying to predict what the exams would look like now this you're probably able to do after you take one test with the professor like you learn their style of how they make exams but think about let's say you have five week uh, I'm sorry like five lectures worth of notes or five to ten you want to focus on like the really big problem in those set of notes and say alright I need to be able to do those ten type of problems by test day so I'm gonna spend all my time practicing until I know for sure I could do these ten topics but one thing I noticed when I was taking that number theory class was there were a few students who, when we were studying together, they're like, oh, you know, Vincent, how do we, uh, how would you do this theorem, you know, a proof of this theorem? And I said, guys, I'm not even going to bother with this theorem for the test because the professor always puts 10 questions on the test. And this one particular proof they showed us is super complicated and took about two and a half pages of, you know, you know, paper to complete the proof so the professor in no way could expect us to reproduce this on a test so don't waste your time and one of the students said they you know admitted they spent like five hours let's say trying to learn this theorem but those five hours you'll never get back so make sure that you choose the topics within reason and spend the time equally you know and even if that theorem were to show up and let's say it's five ten points on the test make sure that you could do the easy 90 percent first before you start spending time on the part that's going to you know take most of your time so use your time wisely you know is the basically the last tip okay well this is going to conclude this video on tips for you know succeeding in college math thank you all for watching and i hope that this was helpful